Hello everybody and welcome to lesson number four. Today we will look at the solution of how you can solve all your money problems. In the first lesson we talked about the bank system making financial goals and for me it's very important that if you did not watch lesson number one go back find the video watch it make notes and do step number one first in that lesson we talked about how a man who has money wants to buy a house but he says not yet because he is smart he says i will put my money into the bank i will wait i will continue to work and my money will grow in the bank. As it grows in the bank, the man gets older and then when he is ready, he will collect all the money from the bank, including the interest from the bank, and then he can move into his house, into his land, and he is not depending on his children to pay money for his life. Lesson number two was all about budgeting and tracking your spending if you have don't know what that means go back watch the video number two and then come back here and watch the video number four it was all about telling the money where to go number three we learned the loan trap what does that mean and we talked about a smart money saving plan remember if it is easy in the beginning it's hard in the end. If you want the house now, you want the motorbike now, but you don't have money, there is always someone that will lend you money. And the money that you will get, you will then need to pay back with interest. And that's the first time when you will become a slave. Last week I gave you homework and the homework was to track all your spendings. Question, did you track all your spendings and in order to start a money saving plan you need to pay back all your loan and then number three i also said you need to think 10 times before you take a loan and my free tip was if you need money save first start now because if it's hard in the beginning it will be easy in the end today lesson number four you are the solution of all your money problems the money problems that you have are yours they're your problems not somebody else's problem but you are also the solution of those problems let's read what the bible says about this keep your lives free from the love of money and be satisfied with what you have. I know this is very difficult because being satisfied with what we have is very difficult because we compare with other people and other people always have more than we have and we want to have more. So this is a great challenge. But if you can be satisfied with what you have, you will be able to grow because you will know how to manage your money well and you will have a good system this is the 70 10 10 10 system i encourage everybody to follow this principle all your money goes into the bank then 10 percent goes into your first fruit 10 percent into your short-term savings this is for your motorbike for your phone for your holidays for emergencies doctor bills and then 10% goes into your long-term savings so that when you are 65 years old, you will have enough money to retire, to buy land, buy a house and not be dependent on your children to pay money so that you can live. And 70% goes into your wallet, goes into your budget. This is the money that you spend on a monthly basis. Money that comes easily disappears quickly. I just had a chat with a man uh, this week that told me that he lost money in the investment on the stock market. Yes, there is a big promise, make a lot of profit very fast, but 
quick money also disappears quickly. Money that is gathered little by little will grow. This is the principle. If you take it step by step, it will grow. Here is the principle and today I told you we will focus on what is first fruits. I will try to make it very simple and explain it very clearly what I mean with this. Let's look at the dollar bill. You all have held one in your hands, but did you see on the back there is something written on it. It says, in God we trust. This means on the money that you should not trust in money, that you should trust in God. Where does this come from? God is the creator of heaven and earth. Everything belongs to him. He created you and me. He gave us skills. He gave us time. He gave us the ability to manage money. If we do it or not, it's up to you. But everything comes from God. God is the creator. And let's look what God says here. This is very interesting right now. This is what God says. Since the beginning of time of your ancestors, you have disobeyed my rules and you have not kept them. What is he talking about? Let's continue. Return, return to me and I will return to you. So something happened. People went away from what God wanted, actually from God. They went away from God. And God says, return to me and I will return to you. God is a God of love. He loves people. He loves you and me and he wants to be close. So God says, uh, but you ask, how can we return? Well, should a person rob God? Nobody should rob God, but you are robbing me. God says you are robbing me. You ask, how are we robbing God? How are we robbing you, God? You have robbed me with your offerings and with the tenth of your crops. So a curse is on you. Now, very interesting right now here. We rob God if we don't give God. God what belongs to him what belongs to God offerings are tenth this is where the 10% comes from this is the offering that belongs to God God does not need money but if we give him out of respect and out of honor check this out bring into the storehouse the full tenth again 10% right here of what you earn so there will be food in my house. What does that mean? So food in my house. God does not need food. He is not hungry. But the storehouse is the church. It's taking care of the poor people, of the widows, of the orphans, of the poor people. So God is interested in people and he wants to help people. How does this happen? through the church. The church I go to is called ICF and we help people. We give out a ton of free water. We give out just in the last one and a half years 1.5 million meals because people are poor because of the COVID crisis. I give my 10%, my first fruit to ICF and ICF is the house of God and there is food for the people in need. Now, the interesting comes, part comes here. God says, because this might be new for you, but God says here, test me in this. This is a test that you can do. Test God. And because God promises, I will open the windows of heaven for you and will pour out the blessings you need. There is blessings that you need and that you cannot buy with money. And God says, if you honor me with giving me, giving the church your first fruits, I, God, will open up the heavens and will give you blessings that you need. What are blessings 
that we need. For example, we cannot buy health. We can pay the doctor, but we cannot buy health. When we ride down the street in our car or in a motorbike, we cannot prevent people from driving into us. God can control other people. God can give us safety. We can buy insurance. You understand what I'm saying? We cannot buy a good relationship with our kids or with our wife or husband. We cannot buy it with money. It is a blessing from God. I experienced this in my own life. I have stopped giving to the church, giving God my 10%. And you know what happened? After a few months, my marriage got in really big troubles. And we went for counseling. And I remembered I did not honor God with giving him what belongs to him. It's not because God needs it, but because I need to be free of my own fear. So I give. And God promises that he blessed. And I am blessed. I have what I need. Of course, sometimes I would like some other things. I would want more. Everybody wants more. But I have what I need because God provides. This is the big, big, big thing that changes everything. If you think you provide, then you are responsible. In my case, I do what I can, but I honor God. I, with my 10%, I take God into my life and say, let's do this together because there are things in my life that I have no control over, but God has. Let's continue. God promises here, I will stop the insects so they won't eat your crops. That's so good. God says, the grapes won't fall from your vine before they are ready to pick. So God says, I will bless you. Your money will grow. You will get wisdom. I will help you if you honor me. If you put me out, no problem. You're on your own. It's your choice. And I'm telling you this as a friend. You can invite God into your money situation or you can leave him out. It's your choice. God says, all the nation will call you blessed because you will have a pleasant country. This is what I want for Cambodia. This is what I want for you, to live in a country where the respect to God is central and God provides and takes care of the crops, takes care of the grapes, of the fruit, of, of the work that you do, that it will not disappear, will not be wasted, will not be destroyed, will not be corrupted. This is what I pray for. So that's why honor God with your first fruits. Like going to a birthday party. When you bring the cake, you cut the first piece. Who gets the first piece? Always the, person's, the person who has a birthday. So give the first part to God. When I get income, the first 10% I give away before I take anything else. The first 10% I take out and I give it to the church. I give it to God. I give it away from me because I honor God. Now, how does God feel if you give him the leftovers, even if it is 10%? This is not how you honor somebody, how you respect somebody. This is leftovers. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. God, here. Here is something I, I still have. God does not need your leftovers. God is interested in your heart. That's where the honor comes from. The most important is that we understand that we need to make a choice. The Bible says here, this is the words of Jesus. Um, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. And the key phrase is, you cannot serve both God and money. This means you are serving something. You are a 
a servant either of God or of money. If you give away your first fruits, you declare to your money, I serve God. God is more important than everything else. I trust him to provide more than the money. Remember, in God we trust. This is what's on the dollar bill. This is what is in my heart. I trust God to provide more than the money. That's why I'm going to take the first 10% from the money I get and give it away. I'm going to give you six things how to live in financial freedom. Six things. Number one, put God first. This is the first thing that I do because it's an, it's an attitude of honor that I want to have in my life. Then be thankful. Don't compare with others because others will always have more than you. And as soon as you compare, you will always feel like you don't have enough. And then be patient. Don't be in a hurry to get rich. I'm actually not interested in getting rich and I don't have a lot of money in my bank account. I am here to serve people. I honor God, what God gives me. I manage as good as I can. I sponsor three girls school, one university and two girls in school. I give away 10% to the church on top of all of that and I still donate and give money and help people wherever I can because I want to be generous and the more generous I get the more God provides for me not necessarily more money but more joy more love more relationship more friends more peace in my heart and all of this you cannot buy with money so number four be the boss of your money and remember tell the money where to go this is budgeting this is budgeting live in financial freedom you need to control your budget save money in the bank let the money work for you we talked about this this is very important and then don't be lazy think about how you can increase your skills to generate more money use the skills and time god gave you use it make the best of it don't be lazy just like me i am doing this class for you for free there is nobody paying me nobody asked me to do this i do this because i want to help people and i know i will bless a lot of people and i already got good feedbacks for this class because it helps people and if it helps people I am full of joy and this is actually exactly what we want so simple put God first write these things down be thankful be patient be the boss of your money save in the bank work hard these are my six tips now I want you to do something right now. Write them down on a piece of paper and think about which one of these six do you want to have in your life that is not yet there. Maybe you need to think about putting God first. Maybe your problem is that you are not thankful for what you have. Maybe you are impatient and you risk too much and you want too fast or you are still not making the budget. Circle the one thing that you are struggling with. If you don't circle the one, you will not change anything and this video is wasted time for you. Or you still have not opened a bank account, a savings account. Do this now. Circle the one that is a problem in your life or you're just lazy and just complaining. So whatever it is in here, circle it and work on this because you are the solution to your problems you are the solution to your problems here another word from the bible i think is so important to understand because teach those who are rich i know there are some people that are rich there are rich people everywhere 
tell them to use their money for to do good to do good you know if you have a lot of money it is the challenge to do good they should be they should be rich in good works and generous to those in need so here i'm going to circle the word should they should be rich in good works so the good works and generous because there's always people that are in need so always being ready to share with others if you are getting more think about how generous you should be be more rich and be more generous at the same time giving away gives you joy and if you give just like the first fruits you will get more if you take care of what you have god will provide you with more you will get more responsibility and again what are you going to do with it are you going to keep it for yourself or are you going to share it and in all of this i believe that god is such an important part that makes the biggest difference in your money management what i would have loved to know when i was 20 years old what would i have loved to know that i know now and i'm just going to tell you these four things write them down to put god first this is the thing i wish have i have known from the very beginning because god's blessings in my life is the most important thing to have what i really need second follow a budget yes my mom showed it to me explained it to me but i needed to learn this and i learned it later in life but i wish i would have learned how to follow a budget and then next track your spendings now it's very easy track your spendings in an app when i had a family i tracked it in a book every day i opened the book everywhere and i write down and i calculate it today with the apps it's so easy so simple but still it takes discipline are you willing to put in the discipline to track your spending and number four avoid borrowing money completely avoid borrowing money because if you borrow money you will lose money because you will pay interest that is just lost money somebody else got rich because of you and uh, avoid that from the very beginning these are my four key tips for you to summarize this whole class if you still have questions about this i am here for you and i just want to end with this one sentence that we learned if it is hard in the beginning it will be easy in the end so study work be disciplined and then it will be easy in the end you will have that financial freedom that you want but in between right now in the next i don't know 20 30 40 years it's you who puts in the work and if you work if you're disciplined focused you will reach your destination you will be financially free not necessarily rich but you will have options you are free to choose you're not depending on other people to give you money because you managed your money well put jesus first if you don't know what this means i will make another class soon to explain more detail who is god how can i have a relationship with him and how can i implement god into my life and also his blessings now it's your turn now you know a lot about money and money management but it's your turn you need to do it if you don't do it nothing will change and you cannot blame anyone only yourself if you don't do it you will not have it very simple and i thank you for being a part of this class god bless you and bye bye